Hello, and welcome to the Freddie Mac Connect session, Optimize and Evolve with Resolve. Audience members are in listen-only mode. This session is being recorded and will be available following the conference. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. In addition, if you have any technical issues, please also use the Q&A box as well, and someone will assist you. Lastly, you'll find icons at the bottom of the screen where you will find links to speaker bios and the presentation deck. With that, I will turn it over to the panel moderator, Mark Compton, Director of Servicing, Strategy, and Integration at Freddie Mac. Mark, the floor is yours. Thanks, Cindy. Welcome to Evolve with Resolve. Resolve is a multi-year project as part of Freddie Mac's reimagined servicing program, and it will end up being an end-to-end -end default management platform when we are finished building out its capabilities. Since we first introduced Resolve back in November of 2020 with a couple of our early adopters, the first features that we rolled out were in an API, which is Application Programming Interface, uh, again, better known as APIs, and this was with our retention product, Flex Modification. Since then, we've continued to release the functionality of Resolve and to serve the various aspects of loss mitigation activities. With Resolve's API, we introduce four application programming interfaces. We have the Workout Options API, which allows servicers to send a small payload and get all flavors of FlexMod and payment deferral uh, retention decisions or eligibilities back. In addition to that, we have our retention API, which allows servicers to ask for specific approval on a payment deferral or FlexMod, as well as to settle a case through that API. We also have our real estate valuation API, which allows servicers to get uh, minimum net proceeds for short sales and our liquidation API, which is also uh, available for short sale processing and settlement. So today we have with us our panelists, Carrie Jackson and Joshua Bishop, who will share with us what's new with Resolve and how they're using the tool to evolve their loss mitigation activities to better serve their customers. Again, my name is Mark Compton, Director of Servicing Strategy and Integration, responsible for getting the reimagined servicing technologies integrated with our service centers and our business partners. Myself and my team have worked over the last several years to be able to get all of our servicers and business partners integrated to the APIs and help with uh, demonstrations for the user interface features as well. And today I will be your moderator for the session. So let's meet our panelists. Carrie, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Thank you, Mark. I'm really excited for today. Um, I also get the pleasure of working alongside um, Mark Compton um, within the Reimagined Servicing, um, Servicing Strategy and Integration team. So I am a Director of service in Servicing Strategy and Integration. I'm responsible for ensuring that the voice of the servicer, the voice of the customer and homeowner borrower are incorporated as part of our technology. And additionally, I'm responsible for preparing and creating awareness of all upcoming functionality um, that will be available in all of our tools. Back to you, Mark. Thank you. That is great. Joshua, introduce yourself and tell us about your responsibilities. Great. Thanks, Mark. Hi, my name is Joshua Bishop. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for NuRes and ShellPoint, which is our brand for special servicing. I'm responsible for basically all the servicing operations. So everything from loan boarding to performing loans, default loans, and then all the way through the claims process. Been with the company for about 10 years and have been really excited to see kind of how we've used technology to evolve our processes uh, and happy to talk about Resolve today uh, with the uh, Carrie and, and Mark. And I'm also one of the um, members of the Freddie Mac Servicer Advisory Board. So I get to sit and be able to provide uh, feedback on policies, on processes, and also learn a lot from the Freddie Mac and team and, and the others sitting on the advisory board. So happy to be with you guys today. Uh, Mark, back to you. Thank you, Joshua and Carrie, for your introductions. All right, Carrie, let's jump right in with the first question we have here. Please share with us what's new with Resolve and what we can anticipate in 2024. Thank you, Mark. So in the last year, we've deployed um, 
lots of lots of functionality into Resolve. So we deployed some user interfaces and um, some APIs that Mark had mentioned, um, the application program interfaces uh, for Resolve retention. Um, so uh, late last year, um, we deployed the Flex modification user interface, and then we also deployed the payment deferral uh, user interface earlier this year. We've also been working with a lot of our servicers on their API integration. So Mark's team has been instrumental in that. Um, and then, you know, over the last, you know, several months, we, we um, have been working towards the expanded payment deferral program, um, the editable delinquent interest um, user interface face and API. And then also um, in recent months, the simultaneous flex modification assumptions capability that is also um, available via the user interface and the API. And then just at the end of October, we deployed the charge off capability and currently that is only available in the user interface. Um, so we've been working very closely with a lot of our servicers, such as Joshua's group at Shell Point, um, and really just working to help them to complete their integration with Resolve, adoption of Resolve. Uh, but they are seeing some um, operational benefits and gaining some of those operational efficiencies. Um, and it's really exciting um, and interesting time to be a part of this work. Um, we have several several of our servicers that have integrated with the Resolve APIs that is becoming more and more part of our servicer strategies. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, and then also this year, we wanted to pick up some focus on implementing eSign, um, so as part of our digital experience in loss mitigation to execute loan modifications. And I will say that our servicers are getting excited um, to continue to optimize their operations. And it's really been a great experience for us to partner and in, in, innovate together with our servicers. Um, so for 2024, um, coming up in 2024, we're really focused on delivering additional workout options and functionality and to resolve. Uh, we're currently working with a lot of our servicers to um, gather some insights regarding third-party sales, deed and lieu, um, and also the customer other mods um, that will be part of the user interface. And then, you know, as Mark had mentioned about Resolve being the truly the end-to-end -end default management platform for Freddie Mac, um, we'll also be looking to add foreclosure and bankruptcy as part of the functionality and to Resolve. So a lot of exciting stuff, a um, lot of stuff that we've uh, we've delivered over the last several months and more to come um, over the next, next year or so. And Mark, I'll pass it back over to you. Wow, that's amazing, Kate. It sounds like you all have been extremely busy and looks like you have quite a bit to do in the future. So we're looking forward to what will be delivered in 2024. So Joshua, can you tell us how ShellPoint is taking advantage of the system to system connectivity with Resolve to help your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been partnering uh, as a part of the Reimagine Servicing um, initiatives with Freddie for years now. And, you know, through that, we were an early adopter of Resolve because it really allowed us to take our advanced loss mitigation technology to the next level with our Freddie Mac customers. One of the things that we really want to do is, is be the servicer that can provide customers loss mitigation assistance when they want it on, on their time at the time that's best for them, whether that be at, at 9 a.m. on the phone with a, a customer service agent uh, or loss mitigation agent, or all the way through uh, on our website at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. in the, in the uh, evening. Uh, by having Resolve, it allows us to do instant online approvals. And so because of that, it allows all of our, our customers to be able to self-serve, whether it be on the telephone uh, with an agent or with uh, be able to self-serve on the website. Um, it also allows us to utilize uh, getting direct um, approvals from Freddie Mac with the, the information behind it as it relates to the interest rate uh, and all of the 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 additional analytics behind it uh, all in one push and so by doing that it allows us to use that when we go do disaster recovery uh, outreach events like the recently one we did in maui as well as all the the ones that we do in our virtual outreach events uh, quarterly uh, at some of our offices we're very excited to roll out the standard deferment implementation for resolve as well 
And um, because of our upfront work with the mod implementation, the Freddie Mac teams made it so easy that they've enabled everything on their side without us having to make a change at all. So we only had to do regression testing and the rest of the was on the Freddie Mac team. So they made it super simple for us to be able to take advantage of the deferment capabilities along with the mod capabilities. Wow, that's awesome, Joe. So it, what always amazes me about ShellPoint is how you always take it to the next level and take advantage of the technology that's out there and better serve your customers. So that's that's great. Let's dig a little deeper into eSign uh, and the digital capabilities that have been around or been available via Freddie Mac guidance since 2019. So, Carrie, going back to you for this topic, can you tell us how eSign can optimize loan servicing and why it's the wave of the future? Thank you, Mark. I sure can. And I'm pretty excited about this topic. Um, eSign is definitely playing a big role in how um, we are modernizing alongside with our servicing partners um, as far as doc management um, in all types of industries. So, you know, this is something that we see in our everyday lives, not just when you are um, dealing in, in the mortgage industry. So um, I will say many of our servicers, uh, such as ShellPoint, are really um, taking this initiative and exploring those opportunities to continue to gain efficiencies and, cop and actually to accomplish their um, digitalization goals. I will say that there are several benefits to eSign um, solutions, such as efficiencies in the operations, um, improved user experience, um, greater transparency really into who signed the document, when it was signed, where the document was signed. Um, the users are also viewing eSign as part of really just the overall digital experience. More and more, I would say customers and industries are moving into more of the digital age um, when it comes to this and just to, to really um, incorporate with the overall you know, customer experience and what customers are looking forward to. Um, so I would just say that our servicers are really looking forward to more integration opportunities into their processes, which really just means more end-to-end um, -end, uh, processes that are much more connected. And then when you add um, APIs and additional automation into, into the operations, that just continues to streamline um, and create additional efficiencies. Um, really allows for, I would say, taking it to the next layer of digitalization. Um, this, the, you know, our industry really utilizes eSign so much on the front end, um, especially, you know, over the last probably 10 years or so, um, you know, people are getting excited. They, they go to refi or they purchase a home and eSign has made it really easy for that experience. So we've seen a lot of great success um, in that, in that, you know, in that space. And we just want to make sure that we, you know, we can create and, and build off of the benefits that we've seen on the front end um, onto the servicing side. So um, we have seen a lot of great successes with um, a few of our servicers that have incorporated eSign into their loss mitigation processes. Um, so that's really exciting. And ShellPoint was able to share some of that with us um, earlier this year. Um, I will just say it's a really exciting time in our industry. And we can imagine um, eSign rolling out with additional um, servicers coming up in the near future. So a lot of great stuff there, Mark, and um, excited to, to see where we land um, with eSign going forward. That's very interesting, Karen, and uh, great to hear how we're looking into the future to be able to allow borrowers the capability to serve themselves when they want to, where they want to. So, Joshua, can you share with us uh, what ShellPoint has been doing in eSign space for loan modifications? Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. You know, we're relentless in challenging ourselves and our technology teams to keep embracing tech and make it easier for our associates, our investors, and more importantly, our homeowners to work out their options from a loss mitigation standpoint. We've had e-sign e e capabilities since last year, but this year, you know, our tech really improved to be done on mobile homes or on mobile phones, uh, which was a huge game changer for us. Uh, when you look at snail mail and a mobile notary, you're looking at two to sometimes as much as four weeks to get a mod back. And that's making sure that it's correct and you don't have to re-sign and have it sent out again. You know, with e-sign with Ron, remote online notarization, we're able to get it done within 24 hours. The actual online signing only takes our customers about five to seven minutes on average to actually get through the entire process. And then we know for a fact that it is 100% right and we'll be able to get that and get it booked and be able to get that customer well on their way to performing. 
That is amazing. I love hearing how the mobile capability is a game changer for, for you guys at Shellpoint. So let's stay with you, Josh, uh, again. What would you say was the biggest hurdle Shellpoint needed to overcome in order to offer e-sign modifications to your customers? And how did you guys do that? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, something we always ask ourselves is how we can get more people to adapt. Uh, really, adoption is always the biggest hurdle, and, and not all customers are as tech savvy as, as some of uh, other customers. So it, it can be a lot of marketing via email, uh, texting campaigns that our teams do, as well as just getting them on the phone with customers and helping them understand how to adopt eSign and be able to get them signed up through it through their mobile or, or online. Really educating them to see the benefit and the fact that the online actual signing process is very short, five to seven minutes on average, has really allowed us to really get them to see the benefit. Right now, we're getting about 20 to 30 percent on average each month of Freddie Mac mods going through the process. And our goal is by the end of this year to get 50 percent going through the e-sign process. One of the ways that we have worked on adoption and education is we've created a homeowner education video that actually walks the customer through the last trial payment all the way through the modification signing, helping them understand how to do the e-sign and being able to get that back through us. It's really allowed us to educate the customers on the best option for them uh, to get the document back to us and be able to sign it online. And that allows them very quickly to get it booked and become performing. And that allows us to not only increase satisfaction with the customers, but also make it much easier for our associates and investors from a performing standpoint. Ah, so perseverance is off. And 50% by the end of the year uh, through eSign, that would be phenomenal. We would love to see that uh, across the board. So thanks for sharing that with us. Carrie, uh, back to you. Do you think there is hesitancy for servicers to adopt eSign? And if so, how can they overcome that? Uh, considering the volume of loans that were originated uh, via eSign in today's world, you would think that they would be jumping all over eSign for loan modifications. That is a great point, Mark. Um, but there is, I will say there is some some hesitancy um, with with adoption and of eSign and, and not really just from the servicer perspective, but also um, there's that challenge there to um, to overcome the borrower's reluctancy to engage in eSign. And, and Joshua had just mentioned that, you know, as far as borrower education and, you know, creating that awareness that to borrowers that this is available and this is something you know that it's that it's real and you know they're not trying to steal information or anything of that sort that um you know it's it's just it's also just it's the change management part of it right um so a lot of change management um you know just creating that awareness and then you know if we think about it from a servicer perspective you know or on the servicing side you know the borrower engagement where um, you know documents would be required to be signed um, in the servicing space that typically revolves around a hardship being experienced and um, you know changing the borrower's expectations over something that we've been doing for the last you know several decades is is a challenge in and of itself so changing our borrowers behavior and you know being able to show them what the benefits are are definitely um you know something that i think we're all up against and definitely our servicers are up against um you know people want the paper in front of them you know to review so you know that's definitely one thing um you know i'd say state and legal um guidelines are definitely um you know another challenge um as well um, as also just thinking about like, well, what vendor would I choose and what's going to meet my organization's needs? You know, again, it all comes down to the change management and it's, it's really, there's a lot of research that needs to be done in that. Um, and again, on the, on the education, um, of borrowers, you know, if, if you think about maybe some of the borrowers that, that may be, um, faced with a hardship today, um, under, understanding maybe when that loan might have been originated, they may not have, had to do any sort of e-sign um, with any kind of mortgage loan before. So if their loan may have originated maybe 10 or 15 years ago, those borrowers may not be as familiar with the overall digital closing experience or just the digital closing experience in general um, when it comes to um, mortgage loans. So being able to understand the borrower behavior, providing that education, I think definitely um, increases this, the success rate. Um, but I would just say overall, implementing eSign definitely takes some thoughts, some research, 
and I would say a considerable amount of um, time to change in order to realize the return on investment. But, you know, we can definitely say, as you know, we heard with um, with Josh, with Joshua, the servicers are really um, that have launched it. They started small, but they're seeing the benefits and they definitely have a lot of big goals um, um, you know, that they're targeting for. So again, lots of overall operational benefits all the way around. Thanks, Carrie, for sharing that. So what I'm hearing is taking the system to system capabilities that Resolve offers and coupling that with the servicers or the business partners, uh, borrower customer portals, and then leveraging eSign capability can truly change the borrower experience for receiving help and in trying to solve their situation where they may be in default or looking for a way to, to help bring their loan current. So I think a lot of opportunity there, uh, but it's great to see how you all are leveraging the capabilities that are out there and available. So uh, again, this has been a great panel and truly appreciate both of your participations. But before I hand it back to Cindy, I wanted to mention a couple of key resources that you will find here on a slide seven. So we have Resolve release notes and a Resolve product timeline links where you click on that to see the latest and most current uh, capabilities that we're anticipating releasing them with Resolve. We also have uh, provided a eSign case study that we did with PHH. PHH was one of the first or the first servicer to be able to complete a loan modification via eSign. I know Shell Point was right on her heels. Uh, we also have uh, the Seller Servicer Guide and other uh, resources that you can take advantage of to understand more about uh, what we have out there to offer. So with that, Cindy, I will turn it back to you. Thanks, Mark. And actually, it looks like we have a, a little bit more time for questions from the audience. If you have any questions for the panel, please add them to the Q&A box and they'll be read aloud to our speakers. And with that, Mark, I'm going to give it back to you. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, looks like our first question is for Joshua. So this is a two part question, Joshua. What were the biggest challenges for Shell Point during the process of integrating with and adopting the Resolve Retention API, and how did you overcome them? No, it's a great question. Uh, really adopting Resolve was a great and collaborative working experience uh, with the Freddie team, specifically Alex Ross and, and his team. You know, we had weekly meetings during integration that kept us in sync, and the Freddie team was always quick to answer any of our questions that our tech or our dev teams uh, had in order to, you know, really make sure that we addressed any issues that were encountered. Um, and really, they were just a joy to work with, always willing to hop on the phone and, and walk our teams through it. Really, the largest challenge we encountered during integration was working with Resolve CTE, which is the test environment. Really setting up loans uh, took several days of lead time uh, to make sure that it, you know, when we were presented with challenges, trying to get specific scenarios of UAT, you know, a quicker setup process would have allowed us to shorten the UAT or the user acceptance testing uh, turn times. Uh, when we did set up new loans in Freddie, we were always, they were always very accommodating and responsive and really helping us through that. And then one of the other challenges was keeping the data in sync. In order to perform the user acceptance testing, various data points had to remain in sync between us and the Freddie Mac system from a test environment perspective. Otherwise, the UAT results were really unreliable and it didn't really provide us the results that we needed to determine whether our connection was good. Uh, and then finally, the CTE challenges. The largest challenge we faced were the CTE challenges, typically because multiple times in a week, uh, it allowed us to uh, have outages so this led to us, uh, you know, doing some troubleshooting rabbit holes, realizing an issue was due to an outage. It also led to delays in UAT testing as we awaited for the environment to come back up and, and to be able to complete testing. Freddie always took the occurrences seriously. We worked uh, really well with them to troubleshoot. And, you know, we've seen a significant improvement post implementation. And then, you know, really just cannot uh, speak enough about the Freddie Mac team and how responsive they were in, in, in helping us um, working through all of the challenges. Uh, the loan, uh, the, the setup for the new loans whenever needed, the countless CTE refreshes that we asked for, and they were always really ready to react to any of the outages. So, you know, with their partnership, we were able to overcome a lot of the challenges 
and really, you know, set us up for the next phase for, uh, you know, the next uh, resolve processes that we work through to really make those a success. It was definitely a learning experience for us. Uh, and we, we couldn't say more about the Freddie team and how responsive and helpful they were. Thank you, Joshua. Appreciate that. And yes, it was a learning experience for us as well. So, uh, but Joshua, we have another question. You are popular and this was directed at you as well. Uh, so this is what efficiency gains and other benefits has ShellPoint realized since adopting the Resolve Retention API? On the other side of that coin, what negatives, if any, have you encountered in production? And how are you overcoming them? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, you know, post resolve implementation, you know, really gave us multiple benefits and efficiency games uh, at, at New Res Shell Point. You know, automatic waterfall updates, you know, resolve has saved our default technology team significant time uh, by no longer having to configure waterfall updates internally when changes are published by Freddie Mac. So, we, whenever those lender letters or bulletins come out, you know, we used to spend a lot of times, as much as two to three weeks, sometimes as, as four to six, determining how the complex they are, setting up those waterfalls. So now when those are published, they're automatically uh, updated in the Resolve system. So it, it eliminates us having to implement those uh, and configure them ourselves. What really, you know, is the biggest benefit for us is the, is the speed to market for new homeowner solutions. By, you know, having Freddie do all the work and we're just basically pushing a button and pulling back the results, it's been huge for us. It's huge for our homeowners in, in contrast uh, to, you know, the integrations that we used to work with. And it really allows the the no vet, no dev requirement. So I know it's a, a big uh, process up front to get set up, but really there's so much benefits downstream uh, in really working and getting Resolve implemented. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that, you know, we've kind of always focused on is is our what we call simple mod or simple solutions. Uh, Resolve enables us to offer instant online approvals online uh, or in person. You know, online approvals have led to an improved uh, homeowner satisfaction, reducing our inbound calls, which, you know, obviously uh, increases our cost of service. So by reducing that, it's allowed us to really be more impactful with our headcount and also be able to provide solutions quicker to our homeowners. We also use the in-person uh, uh, instant approvals have been huge as we conduct disaster outreach, um, like we've talked about. You know, we did three different outreach events uh, during the Florida hurricanes. We also did uh, two different outreach events in the Hawaii wildfires. And by having Resolve integrated with our system, we were able to, you know, whether it be nights or weekends, be able to pull back immediate results and be able to, you know, help those customers that were, you know, the biggest impacted um, from Mother Nature and getting those really simple solutions put into place and providing them some relief. And then finally, we spent a lot of time doing settlements in the past. Resolve's ability to perform instant settlements has saved us significant time. It also adds visibility to our front end UI on the settlement status. Uh, the data checks we're able to provide um, and perform during initial evaluation also allows us to find and correct any mismatches between Freddie's system and our system early in the process, so we don't have any issues when we run into the settlement. We've not experienced any real negatives, so you know I know that was part of the question, uh, but there's really no negatives from us really integrating with Resolve. As with any modern technology, you know there's always going to be some occasional hiccups. Obviously, it takes time setting up. But really, uh, you know, those were very minimal and it's really the benefits outweigh the the time and the energy it took to set it up. You know, not only for our employees who were able to really be more efficient, but also what it does for our homeowners. So there's really not any any negatives. It's only the positives that come from integrating with Resolve. I appreciate that. It's always great to hear the real benefits and gains from our clients, Joshua, and that the uh, no real negatives and hiccups are only occasional. So appreciate that. Carrie, uh, last question is for you. I work with a smaller community bank. Unlike a lot of our regional and national peers, we don't have a large hyper experienced IT team. What support can Freddie Mac provide to us with adopting eSign for mods? Oh, great question. I will just say we we are here to help. Um, we have partnered with a few of our servicers, you know, such as Shellpoint, um, you know, PHH and some others. And that's really helped us to um, to understand and identify some of the best practices to help, you know, get started in the e-sign space um, within servicing. So um, just to give you an idea on how your operations could get started, I would focus maybe on just research. Um, and then also just educating borrowers and kind of understanding what the borrower experience would look like.
like, um, you know, within your organization. And I would just say that, you know, we are more than happy to set up time with you and your teams to help you get started. So please feel free to reach out to us. Great. Thank you, Carrie, Mark, and Joshua. Uh, that's all the time for, we have today for questions, um, but thank you for your time. If we did not get to your question, we'll reach out to you following the conference. In addition, your opinion is important to us. Uh, please take a few moments to take our brief survey so we can continue to bring you timely and relevant content. The presentation deck will be available to you after the session. You can also log in anytime after the conference to play back this or any other session. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.